Size by Size Bible in a Year Chronological Edition for May 28th through the 31st. We read Proverbs 5 through 16. That's nice to be able to say that we stayed all in one book. I kind of miss the story, the narrative of what's going on with Solomon, but it was nice to stay all in one book. Okay, so there were three major concepts that I saw. You might have seen other ones, and that's okay, but what I'm talking about are just these three that I'm about to tell you. And then when we get to the end of the video, remember I'm gonna give you three questions and encouragements, or Q and E, like I like to call them. And you can pick one, two, or three and do them all. It's just a way for us to take the Bible, which was put together thousands of years ago, and look at it, listen to God, and go, God, how do you want me to apply this now in this culture right now? Okay, so the three things that I wanna talk about today Wisdom versus foolishness, hard work versus laziness, and what's the last one? Speaking versus shutting up. So that's what we're gonna talk about today. All right, first one, wisdom versus foolishness. This is all over the Proverbs, but I'm gonna kind of focus on mostly Proverbs eight and nine. Verses uh, one through four in Proverbs eight says, listen as wisdom calls out, hear as understanding raises her voice. On the hilltop, along the road, she takes her stand at the crossroads. By the gates at the entrance to the town, on the road leading in, she cries aloud, I call to you, to all of you, I raise my voice to all people. So we talked about this in our last video, about how wisdom God is calling out loudly and often. And here we see that as they are, because got to picture it, these people are walking into a new city or they're walking into the city. They have to walk along these roads. Wisdom is standing all along the way, the crossroads, along the road, on the hilltop, at the gates, calling out warnings. And it's, and it's as they are entering into this new place. So if we think about it for us, as we're walking along the road of our lives, God is continually calling out wisdom. Are we listening? Are we listening to the warnings? Are we listening to the guidance? Because here it says in verse 32 of chapter of Proverbs 8, it says, and so my children, listen to me, for all who follow my ways are joyful. And if we compare that to what we read in Proverbs 5, 3, and 4, and 5, 12 through 14, where it talks about how when we uh, just kind of sin in the moment, it, it seems fun in the moment, but then it ends in bitterness. We go, okay, which one of those are we living for? Are we just being impulsive and doing what we want to do right now? And then that later on will end up in bitterness. I mean, think about all the times that you've jumped into something and you're like, or you've rebelled and you're like, this is fun. And then however long down the road, you're like, this sucks. How did I end up here? It's because we were being impulsive a lot of times and we did not heed God's warnings of wisdom. So are we doing that or are we stopping and listening to God's wisdom, paying attention to his warnings? Because we can either have joy or we could have we can end up bitter. It's really our choice. We have the choice to do either. Are we gonna go our own way and not listen to God and end up bitter? Or are we going to listen to God and go his way and have joy? It's your choice. It's my choice, it's our choice. But it's, a, it's good information to have that if we're gonna do those things, if we're gonna ignore God and do our own thing, it's good to know that we're foregoing joy and choosing bitterness. You know, and it reminds me a lot of, do you remember, I think her name was Baruka Salt? in um, Charlie and the Chocolate Factory, where she, she's like wanting her daddy to buy her everything, and she sees an Oompa Loompa, and she's like, I want an Oompa Loompa now, daddy. And so she just wants all this right now, I want it right now, right now, right now. It's very childish, right? And when we act that way, it's also childish. Like, I wanna do what I wanna do, and I'm gonna do it right now. When God is going, okay, however, it's not gonna end well. Choose my way, and it's joyful. And so also what we see with wisdom in verses 11, 2, and 15, 33 is that humility and wisdom are like sisters. And so they go together. So we're either being humble and wise or prideful and foolish. We get to choose. And it's nice just to think about maybe we could pray for both. Like, God, I want to be humble and I want to, I want to be wise. I want to listen to you. Okay, so that's our first concept. Second concept is hard work versus laziness. So in 6.6, 6, 
Let me get back there. 6-6 six, six says, guys, I need my glasses. 6-6. Six, six. Take a lesson from the ants, you lazy bones. Learn from their ways and become wise. Though they have no prince or governor or ruler to make them work, they labor hard all summer, gathering food for the winter. But you, lazy bones, how long will you sleep? When will you wake up? A little extra sleep, a little more slumber, a little folding of the hands to rest, then poverty will pounce on you like a bandit. Scarcity will attack you like an armed robber. And there are some other places in here where it talks about the value of hard work. And so God does value hard work. He calls us to work sometimes. And God also values rest. Remember in Matthew 11, 29, 28, it talks about come to me, all you who are weary and burdened, and I will give you rest. God rested after he created everything. He rested, remember? He commanded a Sabbath day of rest. And then in Mark 6, 31, the disciples are going crazy. People are coming at them. And Jesus says, come with me by yourselves to a quiet place and get some rest. So God values hard work and he values rest. We don't want to be living in the extremes where we're lazy bones or we are running ourselves um, to death. We have to find that balance. And so we just can't, we just can't live in those places. We need to listen to our bodies. We need to listen to God. So daily getting quiet before God and letting him rest our minds, rest our bodies, rest our spirits. There's nothing like getting quiet and getting still with God, getting in his word to just kind of calm us down, refocus us on what is true about him. Also, you'll notice that it talks a lot about a lot about hard work leading to having money. And so some of us feel, and I include, this is something I've struggled with, with in the past for whatever reason, I don't know, we get this idea that if I'm gonna be a good Christian, then I have to just sacrifice everything and live in scarcity. And here, you know, nowhere in the Bible does it say money is bad. It does say that the love of money is bad. And if we look, it's the root of all evil. It doesn't say money is the root of all evil. It says the love of money. And if we look at 11.28 here, Proverbs 11.28, it says, when I get there, trust in your money and down you go, but the godly flourish like leaves in spring. It's about trust. What are you trusting in? Again, where is your heart? Is your heart in getting money, getting money, getting money, getting money? I'm gonna get mine, or is it, I'm gonna work and do what God tells me to do, and whatever level of income that provides, great. You wanna, you're want you trying to do what God wants you to do. So it's a heart issue. All right, third, speaking versus shutting up. Over and over again, we see in the Proverbs, the dangers of gossip. It talks about how belittling someone is foolish, Keeping quiet is sensible. So it talks about that there is power in the tongue. It says that in 12.6 and later in 18.21, we'll read the same thing. So when we're talking, there's power in everything we say. So we don't wanna be flippant about the things that we say. And of course, we are going to say things that we shouldn't say, okay? But well, then what do you do with that? You go back and apologize and you take ownership of that and go, I shouldn't have said that. You didn't do anything wrong. I'm sorry, please forgive me. But just realize that there's power in your tongue. There's either life or death. There's either separating people or bringing people together. There's either a stirring up of anger or a deflecting of anger. James 1, 19 says we need to be slow to speak. So if we're always talking, we're acting foolishly. We are foregoing wisdom hearing wisdom because we, we want to hear ourselves talk or we're a nervous talker. We need to learn to still ourselves, gain the wisdom, speak then. Ask God, then speak. Okay, Q&A. Number one, maybe you can go on a gossip fast or go on a, an advice fast. You know what? I'm going to take this time I'm not gonna gossip, I'm not going to give everybody all of my thoughts, and instead, like we should be doing in a fast, I'm gonna turn towards God and seek him instead. Maybe that's you. Number two, maybe you need to balance out your hard work and resting. Maybe you're resting all the time and not working very hard, or maybe you're working all the time, or maybe you go back and forth. That's what I tend to do. 
like I'm gonna work 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 and then I'm gonna like lay here for a while for a long 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 time so maybe you need balance there or three the third one if you don't like those two ask God what is what's his wisdom for you right now what's the warning he's giving you or maybe you already know what the warnings are that he's been giving you and you haven't been listening and maybe today it's like okay I need to listen to that I'm gonna heed that I'm gonna do that all right there you go okay so I will see y'all what's today today is Friday happy weekend and I will see you on Monday bye